Hello and welcome to Photo Walkthrough. My name is John Arnold and this is Tutorial 8, Chapter 3. Before I get started, I just wanted to mention something that some of you might not know. Many of you have subscribed to the show as a podcast and might never have visited the Photo Walkthrough website. On the website you can find all the old tutorials and even watch them right there in your browser. So, if you're a new subscriber and you'd like to go back and see some of the old shows, visit www.photowalkthrough.com and also, if you're a member of Flickr, and if you're not, then you really should be, it's a great site and it's free, but if you're a member, then don't forget to join the Photo Walkthrough group and post some of your own pictures. We learn most by seeing each other's work and giving and receiving critique. Also, if you're interested in improving your photography and visiting Tübingen in beautiful southern Germany, then remember I'll be co-hosting the Tips from the Top Floor Photography Workshop between the 11th and the 15th of September. I covered the details in Tutorial 8 Chapter 1 if you'd like to know more. It's a great opportunity to get together with fellow photographers and learn while making some new friends, and there's still a couple of places left. OK, let's get back to work on our flower image. And remember, this is just one of three flowers that we're going to turn into a triptych by the end of this tutorial. We're heading for a kind of Photoshop flower garden. Now, after I'd finished recording last week's show, I did something with this image that I do quite a bit. I stopped and I looked at it for a few moments. And as I did, I realised a couple of things about it that I thought I could have done better. So, in particular, these corners here that I have already done some work on. And if you remember from Chapter 1, I was trying to... Uh, burn those down a little bit so that they match the rest of the background, which has got this sort of lovely uh, cyan through to navy blue, uh, sort of, it's like the surface of water almost. And these things, that we've got these big ugly stripes in the corner that aren't even matching the colours quite right, so I want to do some more with that. The next thing is the yellow in the centre here. It's, it's uh, We've got this graded layer mask that lets the yellow show through, and I just used a gradient. Um, and I sort of centered it on the middle of this, uh, the middle of the flower here. But it's because the petals are all on even lengths, the yellow doesn't extend down the petals here on the left as much as it does on the right. So I'm going to even that up a little bit. And also the contrast in the centre of the flower here doesn't really match the kind of contrast we've got at the edge. We've got a big contrast at the edges. And although this is contrasty, it's not as it doesn't really match. And finally, right in the centre there, just under where I've got my cursor moving now, if you look, there's quite a bit of green in there and I don't really want to introduce any more colours into this image. I've got a variety of blues and I've got the yellow in the middle and I've got the white down the petals and I'm trying to keep the colours uh, a control freak here. I'm going to try and really uh, tightly control the colours that appear in this image. So I'm going to take that little touch of green out of the middle there as well. So this kind of analysis is something I'd encourage you to do yourself. All too often we get caught up either in what we're doing to one image or sometimes in the process of uh, processing a whole set of images. And as a result, we don't really take the time to stop and critique our own work. But when we do, it lets us come up with a plan for how we're going to approach our image edits. And in particular, I find that when I'm working on a set of images, it's useful to spend a lot of time on one of the first ones, trying things out, and developing a plan, and then use that plan on the rest of the set. The time you spend up front in that way can save you a lot of time later and often gives you wonderful consistency to the rest of the group. So let's set about uh, making those edits. First of all, these stripes in the corners. Now, let me press tab to bring my palettes back. And um, we've got a, a ready-made darkening layer here that I could use to darken that down a little bit more. So I'm just going to go back to the darkening layer that we've already got. I'm going to click on the layer mask so that the layer mask is what I'm drawing on. And then with my brush tool, I'm going to um, remember the darken layer. This is a this is a, a curves layer set to multiply. So that's going to be, if I just turn that layer on and off, you can see that's darkening the tips of the flowers. That's where we left that layer. But what that's doing is that, that, cur that curves layer on multiply is darkening everywhere that it's got white on the layer mask. So I'm going to paint white on the layer mask to reveal a little more of that darkening. And as usual, just setting my brush size to about the size of the edit I want to make. And I'm just painting white on the layer mask there, just to, and I'm pressing lightly on the on the graphics tablet, just to sort of blend it in. And as you can see, that's taking away that slightly ugly looking stripe that we had. And I think that's probably all I need to do. There's, it's looking a lot better now. Just try and break the shape of the stripe a little bit. Maybe do the same in that corner. 
I'm going for a sort of a, uh, if, if nothing else, the background needs to not distract from the rest of the image, but I'm going for a sort of a surface of water ripply feel about the whole thing. So, and the lovely thing about this is it's totally different than the way I did it the first time as well. It's one of those kinds of edits that you can never get to look the same way twice. I kind of like that. It's kind of turning photography more into uh, traditional art. And just out of interest, um, just going back to our original image, all I did there was, was Alt or Option click on the eyeball next to the background layer. If I turn these layers on, you can see that that first soft light edit I made to try and reduce those background bits, a very, very gentle edit really, it didn't, didn't really do very much to the background. If I now turn on the darken layer, you can see even on the original version without the gradient map, that's looking a lot more even. And that actually might be a pretty good way to work on this, um, just to, because that there's, there's more colours in there and it's perhaps a little easier to see where those edits are going. Right, and then if I turn back on, that's my contrast layer and that's my gradient. And I think that's looking a lot better already. And again, I could spend forever on that, but I'm not going to. Um, the next thing I was going to cover was the uneven yellow on the centre of the flower here. And remember that yellow is revealed by our gradient map layer, which is the layer that's turning all of our colours, if I turn that layer on and off, changing all of the colours in the image. So all the darker colours are getting mapped to these blues, the mid-range colours are getting mapped to the very uh, high saturation blue, and then the lighter colours are getting mapped to white. So the yellow on the centre of the petals goes white, the darker yellow at the edge of the petals goes saturated blue, and so on. And we've got this layer mask here with the, uh, where we're revealing all around the edge, the white all around the edge, and we're concealing the gradient map in the middle, which allows the yellow to show through. So what I'm going to do, just to expand that, once again I'm going to grab my brush tool, and once again I'm going to grab black, this time because I want to conceal the gradient map, and I'm just going to paint gently on the layer mask with a big fuzzy brush, big fuzzy edge brush. I'm just going to paint out some of that gradient map. And I've got a sort of an even amount of yellow showing through now, and I'm just going to paint gently around the edge of that just to try and blend it in a little bit down the, down the petals so that the yellow turns to white, turns to blue. Yeah, I think that's that's looking pretty good. Better off doing lots of little touches with the pen than, than trying to get the pressure exactly right first time. Right. Now, I've also mentioned the contrast in the centre here. We've got really contrasty edges on these petals. And quite intentionally, I want the petals to stand out from the background, almost like they're outlined. Um, but the centre here, as, as contrasty as it is, it doesn't really quite match. So. I'm going to add yet another contrast layer, and this time, normally I would do a contrast layer like this one here, where I do a curves layer, I don't touch the curve, and I just set it to overlay mode. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to use a regular old curves layer, and I am actually going to change the curve. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to actually control where the midpoint of my contrast curve is. So if you, if you hold your cursor over the, the, the picture, while you're in the curves dialog and you hold down the control key and click on one of the darker point, darker parts of the image, you can see it's created this point on the curve here. And if I click on one of the lighter, lighter points of the area I want to edit, it's made another point on the curve. And I can see now that, that the tones in that area that I want to edit are between here and here on the curve. So if I'm going to do an S curve, I can drag that point up a little and that point down a little. And actually, I, I want to just brighten that centre a little bit more. now. This is all uh, a subjective edit. This is all very much down to how you think it looks best. And also, I tend to deliberately overdo these edits a little bit so that I can ba I can back them off on the opacity slider later. So I've just done an S curve where the tones in the center here are affected. Um, it's made the rest of the flower look terrible, but that's okay because I'm going to mask that out. So I'm going to press OK on that curve. And then I've got my layer mask selected. I've got black as my foreground colour. I'm going to fill the layer mask completely with black. And the way we do that, with black as a foreground colour, I press 
Alt or Option Delete, and that fills the layer mask with black, which as you can see completely conceals the edit. I can turn the layer on and off and there's no change. So what I actually want now is just grabbing my brush, pressing X to switch my foreground and background colors, so I'm painting with white, and I'm going to paint white on the layer mask to reveal that edit right in the center of the flower there. And I've just realized I've got my opacity on my brush there set to 30, so I'll drag that back up to 100. And pressing fairly hard on my tablet, just painting that edit in the middle there. If I turn there on and off now, you can see, oops, you can see that edit has appeared just in the middle. Now I said it was intentionally overdone, and it is, so I'm just going to drag the opacity down a little bit, maybe sort of 60 or 70, I'm thinking. That's better. I'm just, just after trying to increase the contrast in the middle there, just to try and make the whole image match. And I've just realized that there's a bit of a glow in the middle there. I'm just going to, with my brush tool, slightly smaller brush, I'm just going to blend out that contrast edit into the petals a little bit more. There we go. That's, that's looking a little better. So pressing lightly there just to try and blend the edit. And you can remember you can see the edit. That's option or alt clicking on the layer mask shows me the the layer mask that I've produced, so I can see where uh, where it's uneven. Okay, right. I'm happy with that. Now the other thing that I'm going to do with this curve layer, um, I mentioned that I was unhappy with a slight green hint in the middle there and I can reduce that. I have actual fact, just increasing the contrast has, has helped to reduce it, but um, there is still a little tint of green in the middle. So what I'm going to do with the same layer, so I'm just going to double click on the, on the graphic for the curve there, and I'm going to go into my green channel. Now you can see that the green hint is in the shadow area of this. So I could just reduce the green tint in the whole the whole lot by dragging down the middle, but that isn't what I want to do, that's going to affect everything. So if I drag that point off, it's actually the shadow areas that I want to reduce the green. So I'm going to grab this bottom point on the curve here, and I'm going to drag it just to the right a little bit until the green's just slightly gone. Now that's, it's making the rest of the colors here slightly more magenta. So I want to straighten the curve back up for the majority of the rest of the colors, in uh, the rest of the green channel, by putting a point in the middle there and just dragging it back onto the, the point where the dotted lines cross and another point down here, and drag it back up to where the dotted lines cross, just to try and straighten the rest of the curve. And all I'm doing is I'm just pulling green out of those shadow areas. So if I drag that up and down, I'll, I'll, I'll overdo it a little bit. Now what's happening is that the curve is bumping up here, so we're actually adding greens to our mid-tones for that region. So I need to be really careful and make sure, stick another point in there, just make sure that I'm only affecting the very shadow very most shadow parts of that curve. So there's a bit more green, there's a bit less green. It's really hard to see. It, it, it's probably even harder to see on the video. On my screen here, if I if I watch carefully, I can see what's happening. And particularly if I turn the preview on and off, I can see a, a distinct green tint in the middle there. And I turn that off, it just sort of matches the rest of the colors in there now. So I'm going to press OK on that. And that's my uh, curves layer there done to contrast and color. Right, now the next step I want to go uh, with this image, uh, I mentioned before that this is not quite as sharp as I would like. Um, you can see it here on the petals. This was taken fairly close up and sometimes, uh, I, I mean it, it's pretty sharp there, sharpish there, and not so much there. So this flower was probably not quite square onto my camera and I used intentionally a shallow depth of field to try and separate the flower from the background. So in so doing I've managed to get that petal probably just slightly out of the focal plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of selective sharpening just to try and bring back some of those petal details and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do uh, a new copy layer of everything else. So I've showed you this before. On a PC it's Control Alt Shift N followed by Control Alt Shift E. On a Mac that would be Command Option Shift N, Command Option Shift E. And what that does is the Control Alt Shift N, Command Option Shift N makes a new empty layer. 
and Control alt shift e command option shift e copies everything visible it stamps visible into that new layer so we end up with a new layer here and i can turn everything else off below it and it'll make no difference because we've got a new layer here which has got everything in it so if i was to turn all the layers off below and turn just that one layer on it would look exactly the same as what we had with everything turned on so that new layer that i've got there is going to be my source layer for my sharpening um, and i'm going to go to my filter other high pass and this gives us a um, an edge detection type view what it's doing is anywhere where there's a high contrast between um, one pixel and the next it's it draws um, lighter or darker and anywhere there's low contrast it's sort of 50 percent gray and you can see it's actually doing some some color uh, uh, some colors in here as well because it also uh, detects these on a, on a color channel level so I'm going to take that color out but what I'm after is because this is giving us detail in this view where there is detail in the original image what I want is to make sure that the radius I choose is showing decent detail in the areas where I want to put sharpening in so for example these let me just zoom this out to 50% it's easier to see in this little high pass window here if you've got it zoomed out a little bit um, I want detail on the petals here so I can see that 7.1 is already giving me a pretty good pretty good detail I'm just going to drag that radius up and down a little bit and I'm, I, as usual I'm not shy about my edits so I'm, I'm going to drag that up a little bit even more and remember the nice thing about the way we do selective sharpening um, normally you, you're facing a battle with sharpening between over sharpening some high contrast areas and under sharpening some some low detail areas and what you really want is you really want to bring back detail in those areas where there's not enough detail without over sharpening the areas of the picture where it's already high contrast and if you use one of the built-in sharpening routines in Photoshop uh, quite often you, you're making that balance and you're having to make some compromises the reason I do the sharpening this way with a high pass filter is that I can paint in where I want the sharpening and I don't have to paint in the sharpening in those areas where it would otherwise look over sharpened so as I said before don't be shy about you making these making these edits I'm not going to paint in the sharpening on these edges where it would look really obvious but I am going to paint in the sharpening in these areas where there's detail that I want back so I mean, over here is probably my my most uh, critically lacking detail area so I'm going to let that radius slider go up quite a long way perhaps 15 is a bit much let's go for 12 and I'm going to press OK on that and this gives us this uh, sharpening base layer uh, and as I said before I'm going to desaturate that so I'm going to go image adjustments desaturate and that just desaturates this one layer it doesn't desaturate everything below it so if I turn that layer off it's all still there it's just this one layer and this detail here is what I'm after and you can see the same sort of detail here and here and the way I'm going to paint this in is with a layer mask as usual I've got layer masks all over the place so I've just added a layer mask with that layer selected I press the add layer mask button which is this button here at the bottom of the palette and I'm going to once again I'm going to click on the layer mask so that I'm editing that layer mask uh, on these on these pixel layers you can be editing either the pixel data or the layer mask data so make sure you are editing the right one um, so I'm clicking on the layer mask and I'm going to fill the layer mask with black and now black is my background color so control delete or command delete on a Mac fills you with the back fills the layer with the background color and I'm going to grab a brush with white as my foreground color and I'm going to paint in that gray over the areas where I want the sharpening to appear now this is not sharpening it at the moment you might have noticed it's just making it kind of ugly I'm going to paint a little bit of sharpening in around that center there as well because that's looking a little bit unsharp let's paint some detail in where I want the detail to show now I've painted it completely opaque grey there because this is as I said before my most critically lacking in detail area this area is definitely lacking in detail as well I'm going to be a little bit careful about that thick line through there because I might end up with some sharpening artifacts if I'm not careful there so making my brush to the size I want 
go a little larger there. Places where it's looking maybe a little bit flat, could maybe use a little detail. I'm just pressing as hard as I like. Now, I don't really need much sharpening on this, but I'm just going to maybe put a little bit there. Maybe a little bit there. Could use some sharpening there. Need to be a little bit careful once again on that dark line, because those dark lines where there's already high contrast, remember I used a, a very high radius value in my um, high pass filter, um, those are danger areas. They might end up looking over sharpened if I put too much sharpening in at this stage. Now, I can, of course, take it back out again. So if I do that and it looks over sharpened somewhere, I can go back and paint black on my layer mask and conceal the sharpening. Right. So I've got these weird sort of grey bits on my on my flower now. If I now go to, there's a couple of options here. Um, I usually start with soft light, and I usually stick with soft light. Oops, soft light. Um, I usually start with soft, soft light and stick with soft light. But you can also make this a stronger edit by going to overlay, or if you're really feeling versus hard light. Now, actually, in this case, I think the hard light looked better. If you look at this petal here, if I turn that layer on and off, that's our selective sharpening layer. You can see that's actually putting a lot more detail back in on this petal. And that petal is where I, I was most worried about the detail. So I'm going to stick with hard light, I think. Let's just check that it looks OK everywhere else. I'm just going to, as I drag around, just turning the layer on and off. It looks pretty good there. It looks nice and sharp. It's looking reasonable there. Didn't see much change in this bottom right petal. There shouldn't really be any change here. I didn't paint much in. It's looking OK. That's looking OK as well. Yeah, liking that. I think I think that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to stick with hard light on this. And you remember the other place I painted some sharpening in was just on the edge of the centre of the flower there. And remember, sharpening also increases contrast. So we should expect that there's been a little increase in contrast in that centre bit, which is fine. I was looking for contrast there anyway. So, right, I think that's that's a pretty good place um, for my sharpening. Uh, I think the final step on this particular flower image. Yeah, I'm liking that. I think the final step on this particular flower image is just to brighten the whole thing up just a tiny little bit. Um, I'll do this really quickly because you're bound to have seen this before. I'm going to make a curves layer. I'm not going to touch the curve at all. And I'm just going to set the, the blending mode to screen, and that's way too much. So I'm going to drag it down to zero, and I'm just going to drag it up until I think the image looks generally right. And it's useful sometimes to look at your histogram while you do this. So I'll just drag the histogram in, and with my opacity right down, you can see I've got some fairly clear spikes of colour here, which is what you would expect when you've been pushing the contrast so hard as we have in this image, and also being so tightly controlled with the colours as we have. So I think just overall, I just want a little bit more brightness. So I'm just going to drag that opacity up, sort of 8%, 9%, 10%, and you can see the histogram moving generally to the right. And the main thing I'm looking at here is the centre of the petals. I'm after just, I don't want them pure white, but I want them to look sort of bright. I don't want them to look um, grey and muddy. So if I turn that layer off, you can see it does sort of muddy down a little bit. So let's just see if I can drag that up a little bit further. As usual, I'm going to push it further than I'm comfortable with and then take it back. And um, even at 20%, I still think it looks OK. So let's drag that up to, let's drag it to 40%. And I think it is starting to look just a little overexposed now. So dragging it back down until I think it looks OK. And I think probably about there. So I've ended up sticking at 20%. But I might, if I've dragged up from the bottom, I might have stopped at 10 So uh, it's worth just dragging things past where you think it looks right and then dragging it back down again just to make yourself a little bit braver. And you'll quite often find yourself settling on a higher percentage opacity than you expected and a stronger edit than you expected. Or perhaps that's just a stylistic thing for me. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to uh, end the show there. Um, next week, we're going to come back. We're going to take this image. We're going to convert it to some different colors. And we're going to turn it into our triptych. And that will be the final episode in this tutorial. But that's all for next week. Thank you very much for watching this week. And uh, I will catch you next time.